Good morning, my friends, and welcome to Douglasville First United Methodist Church. I am Senior Pastor Roger Vest, and today is our third of a four-part series on stewardship. Today we're going to be talking about our treasure, uh, everybody's favorite topic. So today I'm going to be reading from uh, Paul's second letter to the church at Corinth, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 11. Now remember this, whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will reap bountifully. Each of you should give as you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having what you need, you will abound in every good work. For as it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. So over the last several weeks, we have been reflecting on what it means to be a steward, um, a good steward, a steward of God's uh, blessings that He has given us. We are called to manage what we have been given. It doesn't belong to us. Our time, our talent, our treasure, all of these things have been given to us by God. And so to be a good steward, uh, to manage those gifts wisely is part of what it means to be a follower of Christ. Uh, we are called, each of us, to do what we can. We are blessed with time. Um, how do you use your time? How does it um, bless others? How does it give glory to God? What do you do with your time? What do you do with your talent, um, the things that you're good at, your skills, your passions? How do you uh, bless God? How do you bless others with what um, gifts and, and graces you've been given? And then finally, we're called to bless God with our treasure the material possessions that we have. And again, as we look into it, it doesn't really matter how much you have. Um, I know uh, wonderful um, people with a, a generous heart who have nothing and people who have everything. And I know people who are stingy with nothing and stingy with everything. It really comes down to what is in your heart. And that's what Paul talks about in today's passage. Now, so we think about why do we give? Um, what are the reasons that we give to, to God's church? Um, all sorts of reasons. One, it makes us feel good. You know, we know we're, uh, our money is going to help the church do ministry in the, in the kingdom. Um, it's doing ministry here in Douglasville. It's feeding people. It's housing people. It's going around the world in Belize and Costa Rica and Kenya and all over. Uh, we're a part of that. And so our money is blessed and it is multiplied around the world. It makes us feel good. Uh, another reason, we've always done it. It's something that our parents taught us, our grandparents taught us. It's something we grew up with. It is just a part of our habit. We have been given money, uh, we make money, and then a part of what we do with money, part of our stewardship with finances is that we give some and we give through the church. Um, another reason is we love our church. And we want to do our part. Um, we have been blessed by uh, the people of God. We have been blessed by this congregation and over and over again. And we have seen it. We have been recipients of the blessings. And so we give, uh, not so that we get it back, but we give so that it can be passed on to someone else. We give because our children and our youth need to find a place, need to have a place where they can learn about Christ, where they can learn about what it means to love one another. And so we give so that our church um, can be better than it was before. We give because we're a part of this community of faith. All sorts of great reasons, and Paul gives us even more. So let's look into this. Um, he starts off, he says, first of all, give as you have decided in your heart to give. Um, so, um, and I, I tell people, I would rather you decide to give a dollar at home than flip through your wallet on Sunday morning and, and pick out whatever you can find. You know, be thinking about what you're going to give. Um, I'd rather have the kids quarter 
than mom and dad's $5 bill because the kid is thinking about, this is something I want to give, I'm choosing to give, rather than being forced to give. And that's what he says here. He says, don't give reluctantly. Don't give under compulsion. Um, you know, if you're going to give, give, give with a, a joyful heart. Give cheerfully. You know, he says, God loves a cheerful giver. Give because you, you know the joy of what it means to be a generous person. Uh, we worship a giving God. Um, and so if we are going to be like him, then we need to look and see what he does. You know, God loves. We know that. So we love. Uh, God forgives. We know that. So we forgive. God gives. So we give. Um, and the thing is, God doesn't need our gift. Okay? We're not paying him back for what he's done for us. He doesn't need our gifts. What we give, we give because it is a blessing for us. We give because it helps us in our faith, in our journey as Christians. It helps us determine more and more what we're, going, what we're called to do and what we can do. Don't give reluctantly. Don't give under compulsion. Do give cheerfully. Give with, with joy. Um, there's a difference uh, when you hear this. We don't have to give. We get to give. Uh, we don't have to write a check. We are honored and blessed to be able to write a check. Um, I don't know about you, but there are times when I've been able to give more than I normally do, and it just feels good to be able to know that, hey, I'm able to do a little extra this time. Um, and to see what God can do with that is an amazing thing. Do give eagerly. Um, Paul goes on and talks about that. He said, the gift is acceptable if the eagerness is there. Um, not according to what you don't have, but according to what you do have. Um, let me rephrase that. You know, um, he said, your gift isn't acceptable based upon how much you give. Um, we actually see Jesus talking about, remember the widow's mite? Remember uh, this old lady comes up and she has these little, little, little bitty coins. They're about that big. Um, and she gives all she has, and he compares that to the people bringing in thousands upon thousands. And he says, she is the one who has truly given because she gave all that she had. So you, it's not based upon what you give, how much you give. It's based upon what you have and how you give it. Is it yours? Um, we're all, we can all be a little stingy sometimes. It's our money. I earned it. It's mine. I want to buy what I want to. Um, but there are times when we need to understand that God gave it to us, God blessed it with us, and we have a chance to bless others with it as well. Um, give eagerly. Um, if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable. Do give anticipating that God will take what you give and bless it and use it. Anticipate that uh, the church is going to use what you give and is going to bless this community as it has for almost 150 years. Think about all the people, the thousands of people who have given money over these years, over these last 150 years. Think about what they have done. Think about the ministries they've started. Think about the lives that have been touched. Think about the buildings that have been built. Think about the programs and the sermons and the weddings and the baptisms and the funerals and all the things that have been done in the name of this church. And all that happened because your ancestors, the people who came before us, and even you, have given faithfully, sacrificially. And because you have done so, this church is able to do what it is able to do. Do give anticipating that God will bless what you give. And do give knowing, because you know the impact of your generosity. Um, think about the ministry that we've had. Think about what's going on. Think about our team that just went to Belize and have come back. Think about um, the people that go to Good Samaritan. Think about Operation Christmas D uh, Douglas County. Think about Loving Hands. Think about uh, the Good Samaritan. Think about all the ministry that goes on in the name of this church, in the name of Christ. It happens because we give. And we can see the effects of our gifts. Um, we know that God is taking that. And even though you know, the, the, the church is a human institution. It is divine-led. It has a divine purpose. And so God's Spirit is at work in our gifts and is at work in the people who, who use these gifts 
to bless the community. So give because you know where your money's going. You know how it's going to impact people's lives. And then remember what he said at the very beginning of this passage. He says, those who sow sparingly will reap sparingly. Those who sow bountifully or generously will reap generously. Um, I have an image of my daughter when she was three years old. We were out helping my dad sow some grass um, behind his house. And we were scattering it there because, you know, grass seed can get expensive. And this three-year-old, she would come and grab a whole bunch of seed and just go and dump it. <laughs> and she'd grab another thing of seed and go and dump it. Well, the next week we come back, and you, know, you got it. You know where this is going. The, where the grass grew was where she had sowed bountifully. And it was beautiful where she had, you know, now it was in little clumps. There was a clump here, and there was a clump there, and a clump over there. But where she dumped that grass, where she poured it out bountifully, it was beautiful grass. And so we, sometimes we, we get uh, stingy, sometimes we don't. We need to understand that when God is calling us to give, He wants us to, He wants to bless us. He wants to pour out His generosity upon us. And so if we follow Him and give like He gives, um, he, he will bless us because of it. Now, does that mean we'll receive money back in return? No, not necessarily. But it does mean we will be blessed. And we will be blessed to be a blessing. And so think about it. Think as, as you prepare to give, um, as you think about it, as you talk about it with your family, as you teach your children about it, Think about how it is a part, an integral part of your daily walk. Because money is an integral part of what it means to be a follower of Christ. Jesus himself talks more about money than he talks about prayer. Why? Is money more important than prayer? No, not necessarily. But what he does, he knows people. <laughs> he knows us. And he knows we, we're, we have to be um, concerned about putting food on the table taking care of our families. We have to be concerned about raising money, making money. And so he knows it's a part of who we are as God's people. And so he spends time talking about it and how it integrates into our life as followers of Christ. So I want to invite you, my friends. Um, so many of you, so many of you get this. You understand this. You live it out. And I want to say thank you for what you've done. Thank you for allowing this church to be in ministry. Thank you for giving sacrificially all these many years so that we can be the church that this community needs. And I want to thank everybody who is thinking about giving. You know, take a step. You know, start that first, write that first check. Put that first envelope in the offering plate. Give online, whatever you need to do, but be a part of what God is doing in this church. Be a part of the ministry that's going on. Allow God to work through you with your time, your talent, and finally your treasure. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for guiding us and directing us. Thank you for blessing us so much, Lord, with our time, our talent, and our treasure. May we give back to you, Father so that you can bless others. Lord, be with us now as we go forth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.